Going into the uh, going into the season, how you feeling? Uh, it, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a challenge. You know, we run a five-one offense, and knowing that we're replacing four attackers and a setter, uh, you know, going in early, it's going to be a challenge. But we're young, we're youthful, and we're energetic and athletic. So, uh, you know, we're we're inspired by what we've seen so far, and just kind of intrigued about what the future holds. Talk about some of your players. Uh, you know, we, you know, kind of, the, kind of the rule. And in, in my rule is we don't really talk about individual players because I think that takes away from the concept we're trying to build. But uh, we're excited about the the athletes we brought in to kind of fill the roles from the kids we lost a year ago. We lost a lot of experience. A uh, team that went 25 and 6, or excuse me, 26 and 5 a year ago. Uh, we're replacing a, a huge portion of that with. Uh, with with a good group of kids, I mean a, a quality group of kids that we think can you know step up and poss possibly uh, start clicking pretty early. Like Lisa, you've been able to tap the Joplin area for some of your talent. Well, we've gotten some Missouri kids, and, and not so much just located in one area. We've been you know lucky enough to get up uh, in the El Dorado area, the Stockton area, places like that, uh, and mix them in with some good Oklahoma kids and occasional Kansas kids, uh, a Texas kid here and there in the past. Uh, I think our recruiting's branched out, but uh, for the most part, uh, uh, you know, the Joplin area with Carl Junction, places like that, we, we've done a little success there. That's a hot pocket. Absolutely. Um, going, in, going into the season, do you, do you think you're ready, or could you use a little more time? Uh, everybody would love to have more time. I don't care if you have five months to prepare. You'd like to have two more days. That's just how the game works. Uh, but uh, more time would do nothing more than probably just give us a chance to probably overcoach him a little bit more. It might be time for him to step out and let, we we need to go play a couple matches early here uh, to figure out what we are good at. You know, we might be good at it in the in the gymnasium during practice hours, but let's put jerseys on and let's find out what our weaknesses are. We don't scrimmage. We don't do a preseason scrimmage in volleyball. Uh, we'll open up. We're supposed to play in the Alley Allen County Tournament September 4th. Uh, for some reason, teams have pulled out of the thing. It's turned into the Allen County Try with us, Coffeeville, and Allen County. So, you know, immediately out of the shoot, you get Coffeeville, you get Allen County, two quality programs that we battled with, uh, I mean, neck and neck the last two years. So it would be kind of interesting to see us three together. How uh, has, have any of the Oklahoma schools added volleyball, or is it still pretty much us? And Seminole. Well, we're the only we're the only school within the region two that's uh, Division two. We're a Division two in the region, and we're the only one. Uh, in the region in Division one uh, volleyball only has Redlands, Seminole, and Northern Avena. So there's only four teams in Oklahoma playing volleyball. Three of them being Division one. We're the Division two. Uh, so the the regions become a little bit uh, number wise watered down, which creates a little bit of a problem with us in in the scheduling area. But uh, we've been been lucky and managed to to find the right matches. Schedule most all of them. Yeah, we we have to go to Kansas a little bit. We 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 uh, we compete within the Missouri uh, region, which becomes a district when we become when we come in uh, into the mix. Uh, so you know that, that's that helps that we get to go play the uh, the Missouri schools. Does that help you with as far as recruitment goes? You're playing up there. You would think it would, but not really. Uh, the name NEO is pretty well recognized throughout the, uh, especially the Midwest and throughout the country. That uh, you know we've had we've had success in getting out there and finding the right kids, uh, not based on uh, one one individual reason and not based on the fact that we're going into Missouri and playing, based on the fact that NEO's tradition athletically is uh, is solid and and we play on that pretty hard. Coach, uh, your name? Eric Iverson. Hey, Coach. Uh, again, going back to that. Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College has a solid sports commitment, and we've seen that commitment step up. We're doing more renovations for the gym spacing and more renovations for locker rooms and more accommodations for the students. We're seeing a heavy emphasis on that. Has that helped your recruitment for New players. Yeah, it has. It does help the recruitment process. Anytime your facilities, be it athletic or non-athletic, get uh, gets an upgrade, a facelift, if you may, uh, definitely it has to help in the recruiting process. Uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people understand on how, on how successful our athletic programs have, have remained, and this is just a, another way to enhance it and try to get it over the top a little bit further. So we, we are seeing an influx in, in uh, interest, uh, definitely. Uh, has it equated the, the impact? Have we seen it yet? Maybe not. I think maybe the next couple of years we'll start to see more of an impact on that. The facelifts, the renovations, everything are so brand new uh, that I think, I think the impact will, will start to show in this next recruiting class, maybe even more in the following. 
over the years, we've seen some economic downturns. Mm -hmm. And those economic downturns have shrunk the Division II pool. A lot of schools who used to hold uh, wide ranges of sports programs, necked it down to a couple here and there, some of them eliminating them altogether. Has that shrinking of that pool hurt you anyway, or does that help you? It, it really is a task to keep that going. It, it, where, where it hurts the, the, the economic situation, it really hasn't shrunk down uh, uh, female sports a, a whole lot because you know female sports is something that's tough to shrink down uh, where it stands uh, for for the obvious reasons. But where, where it, what it affects is you know the, the, I'm sure the funding has affected other schools. I'm sure the funding has affected uh, uh, the ability to go out and maybe recruit in, in a larger area. But at the same time, I, I really truly think that it's actually probably made uh, the Division Two volleyball probably a little more competitive in the fact that people can't make mistakes now. Uh, you're recruiting, scholarships are probably a little more limited, so you have to be a little more particular with who you recruit. Uh, the use of your funding has to be a little bit wiser, and I think that's what people are doing is they're just making that adjustment. Has that helped uh, when you have players that are playing Division Two, they want to go to Division One? Has playing for this junior college environment helped them to move on to maybe a bigger school or a better school uh, in the long run because of uh, their competition here? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you get a lot of kids coming to junior college athletics based on the fact that uh, for a various reasons, it could be uh, their location, their exposure, their uh, their inability to maybe qualify academically, those kind of issues. But uh, you know, do you see a mass difference in, in, in their ability level uh, compared to some, uh, you know, smaller four-year schools, things like that? Probably not so. I mean, these kids probably come in here to this to, to a junior college and, and they advance socially, uh, academically, and athletically as well at the same pace, if not a higher pace, than maybe some of the kids going to four-year schools. Some of the uh, basketball players have said that the graduating class talking about, hey, when my, one of my decisions to come here to Northeastern Oklahoma and College was... I get to play. If I went and walked down to another team, a four-year team, uh, I may not be able to play those first two years. But here I get to play. Here I get to get thrown into the middle of the heat. I, like you said, I have to socialize with everybody, and that's made them a better player. And have you seen that capability with your players uh, flourish as you bring those freshmen in to your team and, and stick them on the court right away to start playing? Absolutely. When you're when you're uh, replacing uh, four attackers and a setter with four freshmen or five freshmen, they better come in the floor real quick, and they they better not spend much time sitting. But you see that in all sports here. Uh, you see that in that's the junior college way is uh, you go to junior college to play, and you know not everybody gets the playing time they want, things like that. But you know there, there, there's no such thing as youthfulness in the junior college. Everybody's youthful in junior college. Uh, freshman, sophomore. There's a vast difference, a little bit of differences, but you know, junior college is still a place a freshman can walk in the doors, make an impact immediately, and th I think that is intriguing to them when they when they choose schools. Absolutely, quite a draw, and of course, Northeastern Oklahoma and M College, a great place to get that first start. Thanks for talking with us today, Coach. You're welcome. We good?